welcome to another episode of Kodo Cinema, the podcast show where I talk about movies. I'm your host, Mark Kodo, a.k.a. Kodo Man. Boy, oh boy, we got a big one to talk about here, folks. And uh, y'all are probably wondering, okay, Mark Kodo, or Kodo Man, what's the movie you're going to talk about that gets you to say, boy, oh boy? Well, the movie that I want to talk about is basically from the DC Extended Universe, and it's probably the most controversial film to come out of the DCEU since 2017's Justice League, and that would be The Flash. Yes, y'all heard that right. I'm going to talk about The Flash. The Flash that came that came out just a couple of weeks ago, and it's not even a month, and the film is not doing so well at the box office. Although it somewhat did fine with critics, but a lot of people really turned on this film in, in, in a complete 360. And this is not even a 180. This is a complete 360. Cause, cause the film under, cause the film went through a troubled production. And it is not just from Ezra Miller, but it's also like from the direction of where the DC Extended Universe is going, including the, the production itself of how long it took. And it, it's pretty crazy too. It is, it is a crazy, crazy production for the, for the Flash. Now, part of this episode will also be a rant because of the fact that what we all know for the film's main star, the criminal speedster himself, Ezra Miller. So, yeah, there's going to be a rant on this one for Ezra Miller, but also a breakdown on the film as well. So, so better hold on to your butts. It's going to be a wild ride. In film. So just to give him my background on the Flash film, uh, the Flash film is a 2023 American superhero film based on the DC character of the same name. It was produced by Warner Brothers and, and DC Studios. It is the 13th installment in the DC Extended Universe, and the film is directed by Andy Muschietti from a screenplay by Christina Hodgson, and of course it stars Ezra Miller as the title character, The Flash also known as Barry Allen. And alongside the film, it features Sasha Kale, Michael Shannon, Ron Livingston, Kiersey Clemens, and of, and of course, Michael Keaton, who returns to play Batman. In the film, Barry travels back in time to prevent his mother's death, which brings unintended consequences. So that's part of the plot of the film. And for those of you that, that you don't know, Part of the film is a, is an is an origin story while also serving as the Flashpoint paradox as well. So technically, you got two different storylines being thrown into one, which at at one point it's not a bad idea, but uh, but at the same time, it kind of makes you wondering, oh, what, was that the reason why this film took so long to make because they wanted to adapt the Flashpoint and of course Barry Allen's uh origin story? Well. Well, to give you, well, to also give you some context about the about flashpoints, the flash the flashpoint paradox, or just simply flashpoints, is a is is basically technically is basically is basically a comic book crossover story arc published by DC Comics, and Flashpoint came out in 2011, so the comic book came out in 2011, so basically a basically over a decade ago, it consisted of of a, of a limited series and a number of tie-in titles that the storyline premiered in May 2011. It was written by Jeff Johns, who, who also appeared in other DC films as well, most notably with, during his collaboration with Zack Snyder, with Aquaman, Batman vs. Superman, the Justice League film that came out in 2017, and a, and, and a few others as well. Of course, the Flashpoint itself 
the, the, the series ended with radical changes to the status quo for the DC Universe, leading into the publisher's 20, 2011 relaunch for the New 52. So the New 52 is basically like the uh, the next, uh, basically a relaunch of DC Comics, most notably like in the 2010s and, and beyond. So basically, just to give you some, just to give you a little more detail on Flashpoint, Flashpoint details an alternate DC universe in which Barry Allen seems to be aware of significant differences between the regular timeline and the alter one, which includes Cyborg's place as the world's as the world's quintessential hero, much like Superman. Although this time around, Superman is being is being held in a government in a U.S. government facility as a lab rat. Within an under and is basically underground in Metropolis. In addition, Thomas Wayne is Batman. So basically, in an alternate universe, Thomas Wayne is Batman due to the fact that his son Bruce died during the shooting. And of course, there's also a war between uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman that has decimated Western Europe. Now, the the Flashpoint comic book storyline consisted of a 61 issue run. The series crossed over with Booster Gold. With 16 separate three-issue miniseries and a number of one-shots begin beginning in June of 2011. Now, now of course, now of course, um, the reception of Flashpoint. The Flashpoint is 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 considered to be one of the most popular comic book storylines for the Flash, and of course, the Flashpoint comic book storyline has been adapted before, most notably in the CW t TV series The Flash. And then, of course, there was also a straight-to-DVD animated movie titled Justice League The Flashpoint Paradox. And by the way, the Justice League Flashpoint Paradox movie, the, the straight-to-DVD animated movie, was, is, actually pretty, is actually very good. The film, I heard the film itself, the animated film itself, is actually very good. And is obviously one of the greatest DC animated movies that is basically straight-to-DVD. So anyway, going back to the film. Now the film is now the, going back to the live action film. Now the elements of the of the Flashpoint comic book storyline is adapted for the Flash film for the live action Flash film. But the only the only thing but the only thing is but that what's different about that film it really feels like it really feels like it's basically you're basically watching DC's version of Spider Man No Way Home. Don't believe me? Watch the trailer. The, the the trailer that came out during the Super Bowl. It has that bit of a Spider-Man No Way Home feeling, because of the fact because of the fact that um because of the fact that uh, DC tends to copy Marvel. DC tends to copy Marvel. I mean, of course, I mean they do that. Marvel and DC copy each other a lot in their co in their comic books. But when it comes to movies, DC seems to be Seems now seems to not only copy but also play catch up to Marvel. DC like this is what the the studio the studio execs over at Warner Brothers are thinking. They think that we should be like Marvel. Here's my problem with that. DC is a DC and Marvel are two different comic books publishing centers and of course studios as well. But the thing is, Marvel and DC they have their own storylines, and the fact is. DC has been pretty slow with their film has been pretty slow with their live action films which pro which probably explains why their animated movies that are going straight to DVD do that, that do a better job than their live than many of their live action films except the dark knight the the, the DC's be DC's best live action movie is basically the dark knight the dark knight whole still holds up as the best DC movie of all time and of course, the best superhero movie of all time as well, in my personal opinion. And of course, I mean this this really dated back to all, all the way back to 2013 when, when Man of Steel came out. Like Warner Brothers and DC wanted to start their own cinematic universe as they want to try to catch up with Marvel. The only difference with that is Marvel already had a plan, while the while Warner Brothers and DC did not. So there's your problem, right? So there's your problem right there. And of course, with the Flash. Everybody, a lot of people say that the that the Flash movie is basically a, a DC's version of Spider-Man: No Way Home, and and part of that is because well, uh, you got Michael Keaton returning as uh, Batman, but this time it's not Thomas Wayne Batman. This is actual Bruce Wayne Batman, Tim Burton's Batman, the Tim Burton Batman himself, Michael Keaton. 
And and I will say this: seeing Michael Keaton return as Batman was literally the highlights, in my personal opinion. Like, like it's so awesome to see Michael Keaton come back as a Batman. It was definitely awesome. And then, of course, um, we also got um, Michael Shannon returning as General Zod from Man of Steel. So, I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. But at the same time, it, it makes me feel, it, I feel like in my opinion, it, it feels a little bit pointless now, in my personal opinion. And that definitely seems controversial, too, because, um, because, because, um, because General Zod is basically the villain in the Flash movie. Just to let you all know. Okay. Okay, I know I'm going a little a little bit too deep, but but I am just wanna throw this out there letting you all know that in that we're getting that Spider Man No Way Home field, despite the fact that yeah, DC is trying not only catching up to trying to play Marvel, but also the fact trying to copy off what what uh, what Marvel is doing. Not to mention the whole multiverse storyline. So basically they're trying to do their own take on the multiverse as well. Okay, so, so, so also not to mention the film underwent multiple directors. Before going into the directors themselves, well, besides Andy Machete, the film was in development in the late 80s with multiple writers and directors attached to the project through 2014. So this film was already in development hell because they were trying to find like a good director, a good writer to, you know, write and direct the movie. So, and to be fair, that's understandable. You know, it takes time to write a good film. It takes time to direct a good film. You know, you want to get the film right. And hey, that's, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I mean, a little patience is right there. But unfortunately, but unfortunately, like I said, where the DC Extended Universe is going, because now we got James Gunn coming in as, um, coming, coming in to reboot the entire DC Universe, Many people said, many people, the, the studio execs said that The Flash is basically a re, is going to reboot the entire DC Extended Universe. Not to mention, we got films like Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, and Blue Beetle. They're about to come out, they're coming, they're going to be coming out in, in the next couple of months. And those, those films haven't, haven't been out yet. They'll be coming out in the next couple of months. So, so we got The Flash rebooting, rebooting the entire DC Universe. And yeah, we got two other films that haven't come out yet. How is that supposed to work? Man, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so going back to the directors, it went. I never went through many directors, including Mark Webb, Jordan Peele, Robert Zemeckis, even Phil Lord or Christopher Miller, and David S. Goyer. By the way, I, I I'm also going to bring up Robert Zemeckis again because there's definitely uh, it's a few references to uh, Robert Zemeckis, just a little bit, just a little, just a little bit in in the Flash film. Okay. Okay, and then of course you also have also have of course Ezra Miller himself playing the Flash. Okay, it's time to rant right now. I I can't do this. I really can't do this. I'm gonna rant. <laughs> I have to. I gotta do this. Ezra Miller, the 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 man himself, who in my personal opinion, I thought, in my personal th- opinion, I thought he was a pretty. I thought he was a, an okay choice. To play the Flash at one point, he he started off playing the Flash in all, d- that dated all the way back in 2016 when he when he made cameo appearances in Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice and the 2016 Suicide Squad film, and then leading up to Justice League. Now I thought he was okay in that in those films. Once he started to get arrested all the way back in 2022 in Hawaii. It, I I hate to say this, and I really do. I lost respect for this guy, Ezra Miller, because of what he 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 was doing throughout his through outside out what he was doing outside of his acting career, his personal life. Okay, so and. And also, I dedicated three episodes talking about Ezra Miller, and 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 you could definitely check those out. It's just basically me ranting about Ezra Miller, but this time around, this is another rant I want to do. I want to do as well because I cannot stand Ezra Miller. I mean, how the hell is this guy getting jobs now after after his controversies? Like his controversies not only included of 
multiple, not only include arrests, but also restraining orders, citations, which, which is basically him committing assault, burglary, disorderly conduct, harassment, and grooming of minors. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is, this is, this is, I'm not kidding. That's what Ezra Miller's been doing since 20, since 2022 after his double arrest in Hawaii. This also includes the controversy with his relationship with Dakota Iron Eyes, where, um, where he, where Ezra was, was accused of grooming and manipulating her. And, and then this also includes harassment allegations with a mother, with a mother and her, and her 12 year old child that, um, that granted a temporary harassment profession order against Miller in Massachusetts. Then there was also Vermont Vermont farm incidents as well. Oh my goodness. And it keeps going. And this also includes a burglary charge where where this includes a burglary charge. Yes, there was a burglary charge back in August of 2022. And he went to court for this. Ezra Miller went to court for a burglary burglary charge and he was he was going to and he was going to face up to at least to at least twenty five. He, he was going to he was going to face up to about uh, to about twenty six to twenty nine years in prison. That's what that he was going to he was going to face up to that uh, he was going to face up to at least twenty six to twenty nine years in prison if he was found guilty. Like. Yeah, because he stole bottle, and the reason that, and the reason behind that is because he stole bottles of alcohol from a private home in in May of 2022, and he was charged with that felony burglary in Stanford, Vermont, on August 7th, 2022, and the the entire court case, the entire court case and hearing was scheduled back in January of of 2023, and Ezra Ezra took a plea deal. He took a plea. De- he took a plea deal, by the way, and I know I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit late to the party on this one because um, Ezra, because Ezra Miller, because um, because I did mention the um, the court case a while back, and I'm a little bit late to the party on this one. So Ezra Miller ple- pleaded not guilty to the charges, which includes petted larceny and burglary, with the latter, which ca- carries a maximum sentence of 25 years, 25 years of prison. So basically, 25 years in prison. Who's going to face 25 years in prison? So then the um, the judge, oh man, Miller, who asked that the court address him as Mix Miller. I'm not making this up right now. I am not making this up. This is actually a real thing. Like Ezra, like my goodness, this this dude's a nutcase right now. My God, this this this. This idiot jackass himself, Ezra Miller. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Like, Miller agreed to plead guilty to unlawful trespass, a misdemeanor, and face one. And he, he, and he actually faced one year probation, a pay of, pay, a pay a fine, to pay a fine of $500 with additional charge of $192. The, the other charges were dismissed without prejudice. So the burglary charge can only be refiled if Miller violates the terms of the probation. A sentence of 89 to 90 days is suspended for one year pending the successful completion of probation, and Miller can also get credit toward that for treatment. And, oh my goodness, it's basically nothing. So basically, he got off scot-free. Ezra Miller got off scot-free during that, during that whole case. What about his other charges? Oh wait, that's not important. The important, the important thing is Ezra Miller got off scot free. That was the thing. He got off this, this dude got off scot free. And I, I'm just sitting there, just like, dude, man, um, he's done. He's 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 literally done. I I can't tell I can't tell you how frustrating this is from as for the. For, for this whole situation. Like, this is the same Warner Brothers. He's, like, Ezra Miller, doing the Flash movie, distributed by Warner Brothers. And, by the way, this is the same studio that fired Johnny Depp over, um, over false allegations 
And of course, they kept Ezra Miller on board due to the due to the fact that he that Ezra Miller has been been doing a crap ton of criminal activities. And of course, a an actual body cam footage of his arrest already online on YouTube, by the way. There's an actual um body cam footage of Ezra Miller's arrest in Hawaii that is being that is being played on YouTube, by the way. So Warner Brothers, the same studio that fired Giant Depp through the false allegations, and yet they kept Ezra Miller on board, who's basically a criminal himself. And on top of that, Amber Heard, the woman, the woman herself, who um, who who is still on board with Aquaman, knowing the fact that she that she lied. And even though she lost her court case in in the U.S. back in back in 2022 as well, also. Uh, not also also to mention Ezra Miller himself also beat it up women too. So Warner Brothers is basically <laughs> Warner Brothers is basically this is basically a triple standard right now due to the fact that yeah they still this is no longer a double standard. This is basically a triple standard that Warner Brothers has got right now. I mean it's still a double standard um, to many people's ability to many to, to according to many Due to, due, according to many people who follow this uh, follow this case, but to me, this is a triple standard right now. Like, you have Ezra Miller and Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp. Which one goes? Oh yeah, let's get rid of the one. Let's get rid of the one that has false allegations and keep the keep the ones that are basically they're base they're basically yeah you know what you know what I'm talking about yeah. Oh my goodness, I am at a loss of words right now. And yet Ezra Miller is still kept on board. The film, The Flash, would have been scrapped. The film itself would have been scrapped and put on an HBO Max. Oh no, it's called Max now. They could have put this on an HBO. They could have put. They could have put this on an HBO Max, The Flash movie, and just like call it a day. But nope, Warner Brothers decided not to do that. They couldn't even reshoot the entire film as well with uh, with another actor for uh, The Flash. Yet they kept Ezra Miller on board because. Because of, because of the fact that well you know I mean you know what I'm talking about. you know what I'm talking about I mean like I said I dedicated three episodes of Ezra Miller as well so you could go check those out after this episode as well okay so basically go so basically now let's go back to the film oh my God I can't stand Ezra Miller right now and on top of that the film itself when you watch this movie. You are, there are moments in this film where you are reminded of what Ezra Miller has been doing outside of acting, by the way. When you watch this movie, I'm not kidding, there are moments in this film where you are reminded of, of Ezra Miller's criminal activities. Yeah, no joke, I'm not joking, I'm not joking around. So, spoiler alert for that. Okay, so, you're probably, all probably wondering, um... Well, did this film, how much of this film, how much was the film's budget? Well, to tell you the truth, it was between 200 million to 220 million, which also includes the marketing, including a Super Bowl ad that came out during, that came out during this year's Super Bowl. So yes, the Flash got his own Super Bowl ad. And then of course, um, and then of course, um, the film, being delayed not only because of the post-production setbacks, the Ezra Miller controversies, the multiple director change in directors, but also the visual effects as well. Like they they mentioned that this the, the the studio mentioned that they put they wanted to push the film back because they want to work on the visual effects. But I feel like the execute the overall execution of the film speaks for itself, and and the visual effects like. Come on, many many of the visual effects in this movie are not even rendered properly or completed. Like the studio, the studio, the studio said that, um, the studio said that th that they were pushing back on this film. They delayed the film just so they could work on the visual effects. No, they did they did this just to put more money on Ezra Miller, in my opinion, and of course the multiple reshoots they had to do. So yes, there were definitely some secret reshoots that had that that the studio put in for the Flash movie, despite the direction that the DC Extended Universe is going. Oh my goodness! Oh God! I mean, what the hell is this studio doing? 
is Warner Brothers trying to is is Warner Brothers trying to go toe to toe with Disney on being which studio is basically the most controversial studio? I feel like not right now Disney still holds the record right now, but as of now Warner Brothers is taking second place. So anyway, um, let me uh. So anyway, um, what or how do you you all are probably wondering did the film did okay with critics? Well, as I mentioned, well, well, the film itself received mixed reviews, praising its humor and performances, particularly for uh, mostly for Michael Keaton, but the criticism was directed as at it, at the screenplay, third act, and visual effects. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, there you go. So anyway, I'm gonna go jump into the into the film i'm gonna go break down the film so uh, anyway we are hitting spoiler territory right now so spoiler alert so anyway uh the film opens up. so basically the uh film opens up so basically the film opens up with uh barry allen at what looks to be a bagel shop he's trying to order a bagel but unfortunately uh bruce wayne's butler alfred played by jeremy irons wants Barry Allen to go on a, on a special mission in Gotham City because there was a bank rob gone wrong. Barry wants to get a uh, a very special bagel. Unfortunately, the uh, the guy who the, the person who was making the bagel took a long time. So basically, Barry had a bail Barry bailed out and decided to throw on his Flash costume. And I'll admit that the costume itself does look pretty cool, especially the extreme close up shot of his face, basically hit of him about to go on or about to go in a Flash. I thought that was pretty cool. I, that was a pretty cool shot. I will admit that. But this is where um, part of the film goes downhill, and that is in his visual effects. So yes, the vis his running. So basically, his speed force, which is basically his power, that he runs. The visual effects. It it clearly lo it looks like you're watching the the CW's uh, Flash. So so you're basically watching the CW version of the Flash rather than a cinematic version of the Flash. And as cool as as his running is, his form, his running form is ridiculous. Like I do not like his running form. It makes me appreciate Tom Cruise's running form a lot more in the Mission Impossible movies and Top Gun Maverick than Barry Allen's running form. I mean, I appreciated Tom Cruise's running form more than Ezra Miller's running form for The Flash. So anyway, um, uh, Barry Allen gets to Gotham City, and then of course there was obviously a bank robbery that Batman is trying to stop, which turns out to be, um, which turns out to be a, a relative of Carmine Falcone doing the ba bank robbery that Batman is going after. Basically, uh, Carmine Falcone's one of Carmine Falcone's relative is, is named Al Falcone. That's that's the name of the of the guy. Al Falcone, who's basically a rel basically a descendant or relative to Carmine Falcone. So yeah. So anyway, uh, Batman deals with that. Well, and and by the way, Batman Batman is played by Ben Affleck in the in this movie, and he was also tied to direct this movie, but he declined to direct. So and to be fair though, Ben Affleck's Batman was is also is basically one of the best parts of this movie as well, and his motorcycle chase with the um, with uh, Falcone is actually pretty cool, and it it looks pretty practical too. Like you, it does have a bit of a practicality to it, kind of similar to what Christopher Nolan did for the Dark for the Dark Knight trilogy. So there's a little something to it as well. So anyway, um, so anyway, what does the Flash do? Well, he has to reconnect a water main, and of course, an earthquake happens, which causes a hospital building to come to come down, and and on top of that, there is a literal baby shower. I'm not making this up. There is a literal baby shower. And Alfred called it out. I'm not making this up, folks. So basically, um, so basically, uh, Barry Allen goes into flash mode. And he tries to catch the what appears to be CGI babies. And boy, oh boy, the CGI looks, the CGI looks like crap. And while he's doing that, he also has to eat as well because of his calorie intake because he was he was running low on calories. And I thought that was an interesting take as well because in order for the Flash to gain more speed and momentum, he has to eat as much. He has to eat a lot of calories. So so he ended up eating 
he ended up eating snacks for a vending machine, including a microwave burrito as well. And speaking of the microwave, he puts a baby in the microwave as well. <sighs> Words cannot describe the amount of the amount of crap that this film is being put into. Like, as, like the Flash puts a baby in the microwave, and of course, I mean, obviously, he rescues the babies. This also leads up to a line that completely reminds me of Ezra Miller's antics. He, um, um, I know this is an incident, but I'm pretty sure there, I, I, there's definitely treatments for trauma and mental health. He mentions trauma and mental health, and I'm just sitting there just saying, like, dude, you do realize who you're talking to, right? You know who you're talking to. And I know that that this that Ezra Miller needed need that right now, and not just mental health treatment as well, but prison time as well. Yeah, you you, you realize who you're talking to, Barry Allen, Flash, Ezra Miller, huh? So right after that baby shower, Barry Allen goes back to find Batman, who is basically at a bridge, hanging on to dear life with Al Fal Falcone until they were both rescued by none other than. Diana Prince, also known as Wonder Woman, played once again by by uh, Gal Gadot, and her appearance is actually pretty surprising too. I mean, hey, it was actually pretty nice to see Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck back in this movie. And then you're all probably wondering, well, where's Superman? Well, it turns out Superman was basically um, he's basically doing uh, other business as well across across the world, and that was supposed to be meant for that was also meant that was also meant for a cameo, cameo appearance for. For Henry Cavill, who's who, who was basically cut from this film, by the way, he actually filmed a few scenes for cameo appearances that were actually left on the cutting room floor, knowing the fact that Warner Brothers fired Henry Cavill. Yeah, Warner Brothers fired Henry Cavill after his brief cameo appearance in the Black Adam post credit scene, by the way. So, so anyway, um, with Wonder Woman, Batman, and the Flash already completed their mission for the day. Uh, Barry Allen re revisits his childhood home and remembers his youth with his parents, Nora and Henry, before Henry's wrongful imprisonment for Nora's murder. So basically, part of the origin story is basically that uh, Barry Allen's mom was killed in the front, was killed, but Barry's father was falsely accused of mur murdering his own his own wife. But the thing was, but who killed Barry Allen's mom? That's the question. We don't see who the killer was in this movie. A lot of people are asking, well, who killed uh, Barry Allen's mom? Well, it turns out if you're in the comic books, it was actually Reverse Flash. And uh, Barry's father, Barry's falsely accused of murdering, murder, uh, murdering uh, Barry Allen's mom. So anyway, so anyway um, Barry Allen was overcome by his emotions, which, which, I'm pretty sure is a, which I'm pretty sure is an understatement due to the fact that Ezra Miller has his own emotions as well outside of acting. Barry accidentally uses the speed force to travel back in time to earlier in the day and informs Bruce about it. So basically, going back in time using the speed force. So this whole segment, this whole this so this whole sequence that Barry Allen is doing right now, the which which is basically the speed force. It's, you're basically what it feels like is basically Barry Allen seeing all like see, well seeing seeing like hit, seeing the present basically seeing the present but what it looks like it, but it looks like in a motion capture but it looks like it's all in motion capture and yes and yes they'll there you you're gonna see Barry Allen going back in time in Speed Force with motion capture so what you're seeing right so what you're seeing during that film is basically motion capture. And it's basically you're basically watching what looks to be a Robert Zemeckis film. And as I mentioned, Robert Zemeckis was originally going to direct the Flash movie. And basically, I'm just sitting in my seat saying, "Well, to be fair, Robert Zemeckis directing the Flash looks very promising because Robert Zemeckis has be has done um three about three films that he directed that that went into motion capture territory, basically the Polar Express." Beowulf and Disney and Walt Disney's A Christmas Carol, which I will say this, it is a risky move. It was a risky move, but at the same time, but at the same time, an ambitious challenge. So, and I give Robert Zemeckis credit for that as well. But 
But like I said, but he didn't direct the Flash. But I'm just saying that because because of the motion capture technology that Warner Brothers used for that se- for that sequence, it makes you feel like you're watching a Robert Zemeckis movie. So then later on, Barry Allen tells uh, Br- tells Bruce Wayne that that he could go back in time to go back in time and to inform to and to to basically prevent the death of his mother brother. Although Bruce Bruce tells Barry. But if you do that, you could destroy everything. And then, of course, and then of course, um, Bruce leaves, and that's basically it. This is the final scene with uh, Ben Affleck. Like seeing Ben Affleck one more time in this movie, it is very hard. It is, it is heartbreaking because even though he's not because he's not playing Batman anymore in the DC extended universe, it is heartbreaking to see that. In my personal opinion. And like I said, seeing Ben Affleck as uh, Batman, Bruce Wayne, is obviously one one of the best parts of this movie, and it's heartbreaking to see Ben Affleck play the character one last time. So anyway, um, Barry ignores. By the way, did I mention that Kiersey Clemens is in this movie? Kiersey Clemens plays uh, um, Iris West. Basically, uh, the Iris West is the girlfriend to um, Barry on the Flash. She is barely in this movie, and we, and we only get about at least one or two. Se- we we only get about a, at least one or two scenes with her, and she's barely in this movie, in my personal opinion. And despite what Kiersey Clemens got, I mean, I think she did a good job with what she was given, but I feel like, but I feel like we barely see this character at all in this movie, in my personal opinion. So anyway, Barry Allen goes back to the day of Nor of Nora's death and prevents it from happening. Also, the fact that Barry also stole um, stole a grandma a grandma's shirt and a grandfather's pants. Now, and like I and basically, like I said, keeps reminding of Ezra Miller because also Ezra Miller also wore some questionable clothes as well. By the way, outside of his act, outside of his acting career, and he's knocked out by the by the speed force by another speedster and ends up in 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 an alternate 2013 where his mother is is alive. And of course, and, and of course, um, now you're probably wondering how did he do that? Well, it turns out uh, Barry Allen's mom was at the was at a, was at the grocery store, and um, and a, and what she forgot was to buy the buy a can of of tomatoes. So basically, um, Barry Allen altered that timeline so he was able so he was able to put the tomatoes in the cart during his Speed Force run. And and that was it. That was it because because in the because in in the past prior to uh, Nora's death, um, Barry's father was the one who was going to who was going to who was buying the can of tomatoes and coming home realizing that Nora was the one being murdered. And to to let you to let you all know, and then and then. Uh, and then of course, and then of course, prior to the Speed Force, Barry Allen gets knocked over by a speed by another speedster, ends up in an alternate 2013 where his mom is alive. He finds his past self and realizes that he has a ride on the day he originally obtained his powers. So yes, so yes, the so yes, uh, the Flash that we got in this movie, he ends up in 2013 and he bumps into his 2013 self. And he his he also gets a stand in. Ezra Miller gets a stand in as well. So technically, it's not only Ezra Miller but also a stand in as well to create to create the variants of Barry Allen the Flash. And seeing both flash seeing both flashes, I will say this: it is actually a pretty clever use of the visual effects. But also at the same time, the 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 other flash. His past self is obviously probably one of the most annoying additions to this movie. Like, I'm not kidding you. The past ver- past self of Barry Allen the Flash is obviously annoying. And it'll, it'll get you on your nerves. So, <laughs> anyway, so anyway, uh, Barry, Barry Allen, the future Barry Allen, I should say, the, the present Barry Allen realizes that yeah he 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 arrived on the day that he obtained his powers so 
Barry and his younger self go to the Central City Police Department where Barry forces 2013 Barry to get struck by lightning in order to recreate the accident that gave him his powers. Now, both Barrys end up getting struck by lightning, but the only thing was 2013 Barry, the 2013 Barry got his powers, but the other Barry lost his powers. Don't believe me? Well, the the other Barry who tries to tries to run, but unfortunately he runs in an awkward form without lightning. So yes, the the Barry Allen, so the Barry Allen for the present does not have his powers, while the Barry Allen for 2013 has his powers. And and boy oh boy, like <laughs> and boy oh boy, all hell breaks loose for. Uh, 2013 Barry as he tries to use his powers and and then of course he his clothes gets burned off and I'm telling you right now I hope that's not what I'm, I'm telling you right now I'm telling you right now this is basically just just a, this feels like this feels like Ezra Miller right now being a complete dick right now <laughs> like this is basically Ezra Miller being a complete dick Oh my goodness! I hope that's and and that better not be what Ezra Miller's life. If that better not be what Ezra Miller's been doing, I hope he doesn't. My goodness! Oh, I am at a loss for this movie. I don't think I'm gonna make it through this episode. Oh my goodness! Okay, let's keep going. So anyway, um. So anyway, uh, the pre Barry Allen for the present tells 2013 Barry that yeah he got his powers, and then and then of course um, of course uh, he has to eat a lot because you know he's got an intake on calories he's got to like bring in the calories to you know gain up that to gain that you know that speed and momentum you know what I'm saying. So then later so basically uh, later on uh, both Barrys go. Go watch a broadcast of basically uh, General Zod. So yes, as I mentioned, we got General Zod, played by Michael Shannon, who is preparing to invade Earth, which basically takes place in the events of Man of Steel. Surprisingly, this time around, uh, Superman is not in this timeline. This time around, it's Kara. It's Kara Zor-El, played by Sasha Kale, and we don't see her until uh, the second act of the movie. So the Barrys attempt to assemble the Justice League, but but they were unsuccess but it was unsuccessful in this timeline. So and and they tried to try to locate Diana Prince. No luck over the no luck. Victor Stone. Although Victor however, Victor Stone has not gained his abilities yet because he's actually a, a very popular college football player. Arthur Curry was not born, so they got a phone call to um Thomas Curry, played by Tamal Morrison, and and the phone call was pretty short and brief. Like a panther. And of course, uh, they had to go. The both berries had to go to Gotham City to to Wayne Manor to find uh, Bruce Wayne. And and of course, before that, um, uh, 2013 Barry Allen and present Barry Allen basically have a conversation with uh, 2013 Barry Allen, Barry Allen's roommates. And yes, Barry Allen and 2013's got roommates because uh, 2013 Barry Allen is basically in college. And then, of course, uh, this also gets into a, what appears to be a crazy moment of like be, of a uh, present Barry Allen describing them of what his uh, of what of what he's been doing by traveling back in time to a multiverse, and and he's trying to and he's trying to and we get a moment where um, the roommates mentions uh, the roommates met and, and we get a moment where Barry Allen says he compares his time travel to back to the future and then of course and then and then of course the roommates were like oh back to the future with eric stoltz but no uh barry allen from uh, the pat for the president's basically uh, no uh you mean you mean michael j fox and then the the roommates were like no eric stoltz so i actually i actually figured this out right away you know as, as since they mentioned eric stoltz because eric stoltz was actually the runner-up to play marty mcfly because uh, Michael J. Fox was committed to uh, family ties when when uh, Robert Zemeckis was trying to um, cast him for the lead role of Marty McFly in uh, Back to the Future. And and this gets Bar the present Barry Allen to realize that he not only altered the timeline, but he completely rewrote history. So basically, in that timeline, 
Michael J. Fox is not Marty McFly. It's Eric Stoltz. And then, of course, uh, Footloose not being played by Kevin Bacon. This time around, Michael J. Fox plays Kevin Bacon. Although there was rumors of Rob Lowe and Tom Cruise going up for the role of uh, Kevin Bacon's Kevin Bacon's role for Footloose. And then, of course, uh, Kevin Bacon plays uh, Maverick in, in Top Gun. And I wonder who Tom Cruise plays in that in that alternate timeline. So yes, um, so so yes, we get another Robert Zemeckis reference, <laughs> based because of the fact that yeah, Barry Allen completely rewrote history. But this time, Eric Stoltz is Martin McFly, not Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox is basically Kevin Bacon's character in Footloose, and then Kevin Bacon plays Tom Cruise's character Maverick in Top Gun. And that's basically it. <laughs> that's basically it. Okay, so moving for and so basically moving forward, um, um, so moving forward, both Barry Allen's travel to Wayne Man Wayne Manor in Gotham City, and th and I'm not gonna lie, this this is basically leads it to into the second act, and in my opinion, the second act is actually the best part of this movie, because why? Because we got Michael Keaton as <laughs> as Batman, yes. We got Bat. We got Michael Keaton back as Batman, and and he's basically an older version. He's 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 basically older in this movie, knowing the fact that Michael Keaton. But yes, Michael Keaton is pretty old. And by the way, Michael Keaton is seventy one years old when this movie came out. He is he is seventy one years old, and I will tell you this: he still got it. Michael Keaton still got it as Batman Bruce Wayne, and it is. It, and it is great to see him. Although it is, although I do feel it is also a shame too because we, I would have loved to see Michael Keaton as not only Batman but also Thomas Wayne Bat, Thomas Wayne Batman, not uh, Bruce Wayne Batman. But from what we got, it's actually pretty cool. It's actually pretty cool and nostalgic at the same time. You basically got that Tim Burton feel to it. So basically, once you once you get to the scene of Wayne Manor, you got that Tim Burton feel. With the Danny, with Danny Elfman's uh, Batman theme play, played over for a few for a few moments, which is also a very good nostalgic touch to it. On top of that, with a bit of and, and of course with a little bit of hints of Shirley Walker as well, because Shirley Walker, uh, who is a very famous uh, one of the few, one a very famous uh, composer, she composed uh, music for the Batman animated TV show, including the Superman animated TV show, along with. Uh, the 1990 Flash TV show as well, which is a which is also a very nice little bit of a little bit of a, a little bit of a touch to it, if you know what I'm saying as well. Shuri Walker, Shuri Walker, who is based, she's basically a fem female composer, but one of the one of the most famous female composers for uh, for film and TV, most notably for the DC animated TV shows, and of course for uh, Batman and Superman, but also the live action Flash TV show that came out in the 90s as well. So very nice, uh, very uh, so a little bit of a little bit of a touch to it, just just a little bit, just just a little bit, in in my personal opinion. So basically, Bruce explains the concept of the multiverse by using spaghetti and reveals that using time travel to alter history not not only affects events after the alteration, but before it, but before it as well. Explaining why Barry noticed changes to the timeline that occurred before his initial point of time travel. So the two berries convince Bruce to help to help them find Cal L. And then of course, using a backdoor connection to NASA within the Batcave, Barry and Bruce are able to locate a Kryptonian pod that was reportedly discovered in Soviet Siberia, which is basically um, which is basically a ref a basically an Easter egg to you know, Superman Red Sun, although the uh, although um, Although we don't see Superman, in the, we don't really see Superman in this movie, despite uh, a brief mention, despite mentions to it. And then, of course, we probably get what is obviously probably one of the most iconic moments: both Barry seeing Bruce Wayne in full costume as Batman. And and of course, we get we get we get this line: "Yeah, I'm Batman." Oh that that ah uh, oh man that I'm just like oh this is going oh mm, now it's going good now it's getting there I mean the first act alone wasn't as great but the second act oh my goodness it's chef's kiss oh so good to see Michael Keaton in this movie 
Okay, so anyway, um, bo both Barrys and Bruce uh, arrive in uh, in Soviet Siberia, and they they actually find what is actually Kal El's cousin, Kara Zorel, also known as Supergirl. And after they rescue Kara from the facility, Barry asks Bruce to help him get his powers back by recreating the original accident. And by the way, before that, um, there was also an there was an ambu ambush as well, and Batman fighting all the all the Soviets, like like he like like fighting all the Soviets, like he still got the fighting abilities, just like just like the just like the Tim Burton Bat just like the Tim Burton Batman, he still got it. And then of course, uh, Kara also joins in on the fight as well after uh, getting a little bit of sunlight onto her because when when they when uh, Batman and the bear and the berries rescue Kara, Kara looks like a skeleton, like as if she hasn't eaten any as as she hasn't eaten or eaten or done anything, and that's basically what happened in Flashpoint. The same with Superman as well in Flashpoint, where he's just basically um a well, basically a skeleton at that point. Same with Kara in this movie, and I'm glad that Kara was able to regain her strength in the sun because remember, for the Kryptonians, for Supergirl and Superman, they had to get their power by the sun, and I'm glad that Kara was able to get her powers back by using the sun. and And her and her uh, Super Supergirl costume, very cool. I liked her outfit. I liked her costume and everything. It it literally calls back to Henry Cavill's uh, Superman costume in the 2013 Man of Steel film, which is a very nice callback to it, by the way. So anyway, so anyway, um, so anyway, any, so anyway, um, so so anyway, um, after rescuing Carl from the facility, as I mentioned, Barry asked Bruce to help him get his powers back by recreating the original accident. The first two attempts failed and nearly killed Barry prompting uh, Kara to fly Barry into the storm and get struck by by lightning for a third time. And it, and it successfully revived uh, Barry Allen's powers. And that's, this is Barry Allen from the present. So then, Kara and Bruce join the two Barrys to fight Zod's forces. Because uh, this time around, it's not Superman who is being turned into General Zod. It's, it has, it's basically Kara, but Kara doesn't turn herself in. So, but what basically happens is when the mil because remember in the scene where um the military and Superman meet up with General Zod for the first time. Well, it turns out in the alternate timeline, General Zod rages war on the entire mil on the entire U.S. military, and this leads up to the third act. This is basically the third act where it's basically the battle is basically the final battle between General Zod and his forces. Batman flies his Batwing, very cool Batwing, by the way. And I forgot to mention the Batmobile. We got to see the Batmobile again in that movie. It was it's so awesome to see the Batmobile, by the way. But 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 the Batwing, awesome as well. So so anyway so anyway um uh Batman, Supergirl, and the and the two berries uh, flying into the battlefield, and we also get this cringy line as well, like where um uh Barry where Barry where one of the berries tries to film a uh, Supergirl flying and. And he he comes back with this line, uh, "What our children? Are, he's filming. He's filming Supergirl flying on his phone, and it's basically like uh, our our kids are wanting to see this." Now I'm just like, "Really? I'm just like, really? Oh my goodness, what the hell? I mean, yeah, what the hell is, <laughs> is up with that line? Like I said, there are moments in this film where you are reminded of Ezra Miller's antics. By the way, hey." <sighs> I mean, I mean, damn, that's just, ugh. But anyway, um, so anyway, we get to the third act, and I will say this, I feel like the third act in this is, is not great. The third act for The Flash is not great. Because, um, because of the visual effects, you see where this film is going, you, you see the visual effects in this movie. The unfinished visual effects, my god. And the visual effects are not that good in, in that final act, by the way. And you 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 see it on screen, by the way. You you're seeing it already on screen. And while I'm on the subject of visual effects, Andy Machete even came out 
in an interview has said, oh, the visual effects were intentional. And I'm just like, you're telling me you wanted those visual effects to look bad on a $200 million, bu- $200 million budget? Aven- the first Avengers films had a budget of $200 million, and those visual effects in, th- in that film are good. They're so good. How can how the hell how in the hell are those visual effects in the Avengers look so good compared to the Flash, which has a two hundred million dollar budget, and 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 they couldn't and it, and Warner Brothers couldn't have good visual effects in that movie? I mean, what the hell? Oh my goodness. So anyway, um, so anyway, um, Kara meets up with General Zod, and General Zod reveals that Superman. Well, Superman or Kal El didn't make it out of the pod, and this gets Carl to snap, and she really goes into town on Zod. And on top of that, both berries run in the speed, both berries run in their in their running forms, and we actually get a pretty another cool shot of Barry Allen, of both berries clashing with their feet, in a, in, a, in an extreme close up shot, which which I thought was a pretty cool cool shot despite the bad visual effects. And we even get a pretty cool uh, Dust Devil sequence from both berries to, like, blind the, the Kryptonian soldiers. So, anyway. So, anyway, uh, during the fight with Zod, Kara learns, as I mentioned, uh, Kal-El did not make it out of the, out of the escape pod. And basically, um, basically, Kal-El is dead in that universe. And, and of course, Zod revealing the Codex, the Codex is, is inside Kara. So as I mentioned, the two fights with Zod overpowering Kara, and he killed her. Kara is killed multiple times because Baryon tries to go back in time multiple times to save Kara, but no matter how many times he tries to save Kara, it doesn't work. Which means Baryon, the Flash, cannot save, cannot save every everybody. He cannot save everybody, even Batman himself. Batman gets killed in this movie too. He he gets killed in this movie after finding a Kryptonian after finding a huge Kryptonian Kryptonian general, by the way. Now, and not General Zod, but like his second in command of some sort. And and we we also get a pretty cool flying sequence from Batman as he jumps out of the out of his Batwing too. And he sacrifices himself in an unsuccessful attempt to take down a Kryptonian ship, including uh, one of General Zod's second in command. And as I mentioned, no matter how many times Barry goes back in time to save their companions, which is basically Batman and Supergirl, they fail. They both fail to. Well, I, they fail. They fail to uh, rescue um, to rescue uh, Kara or Kara and Bruce. So then, so then, 2013 Barry keeps on going because the past. Barry Allen from the from the present realizes that if you keep if you keep doing this, stunt this will something bad's gonna happen, and it's actually true because it turns out that the corrupt speedster who originally knocked Barry out of the Speed Force returns as is revealed to be a future version of 2013 Barry, who still believes that he could save his world from Zod and prevent the deaths of Bruce and Kara, and then this leads into what what appears to be a casual loop paradox. That led to his own creation, but grows angry when Barry reveals his intention to reverse the changes to the timeline by letting by letting Nora die. And then of course, and then of course, what we get is probably a cameo overload. This is basically cameo overload. Overload. We get CGI motion capture recreations of Christopher Reeve Superman, including George Reeve Superman. On top of that, we get to see the uh, 1980s uh, Supergirl with blonde hair this time, because um, um, the Supergirl, Supergirl in the in the, in the Flash, this in this version of the Flash in this film, this has a uh, uh, black hair by the way, black hair by the way, just to let y'all know. We even get a cameo appearance. We even get a recreation of Adam West Batman, and on top of that. A uh, Superman, a motion capture di- di- digital creation of Nicolas Cage Superman from uh, from an, from Tim Burton's uh, version of Superman. Yes, we all we actually get a cameo from Nicolas Cage himself as Superman because 
Tim Burton was originally going to do a do his own take on Superman with Nicolas Cage. Although that would actually would be interesting. It would be interesting to see what Tim Burton's take on Superman would have been would have been like, which is actually which in my opinion is actually pretty cool. Also, the fact that Nicolas Cage also voiced Superman in uh, the Teen Titans Go Go movie, by the way. So then, so so then, um, so so then, um, Barry Allen decides. So Barry Allen decides. So present Barry Allen decides to, um, decides to um, Barry Allen decides. So very so basically the so basically the Dark Speedster Barry Allen. Attempts to kill the present Barry, but impales 2013 Barry, who basically sacrifices himself to save Barry and wipes out the Dark Speedster from the timeline. And while I'm on the and while I'm on the subject of the timeline, uh, present Barry Allen goes back in time to, you know, fix everything. He decided to, um, you know, put the can of tomatoes back on the shelf, and I'm not gonna lie. I I almost teared up in this moment of Barry Allen seeing his mom for the last time. While um, Barry's mom doesn't recognize uh, her own son in that moment, you can definitely feel the you can definitely feel the emotional connection to it, knowing the fact that this is the last this that Barry that this is the last time Barry Allen is seeing his mom in person before uh, her, her death and it is very emotional i will say this i will say this it is very emotion very very emotional to see this and i almost teared up i really almost teared up so then after fixing the timeline um barry allen ends up back in his own present though so, yes he he was able to uh he was able to, so basically he was able to fix the timeline and he's back in the present. And in the aftermath, Barry Allen, and in the aftermath, there was a minor change in the past, creating new evidence in the present day that proves Henry's innocence. And after returning to the present and helping to, you know, um, you know, help, able to help, to help, uh, to help Barry's father, Henry, Barry is contacted by Bruce Wayne who whose appearance has changed once again as a result of Barry Allen's timeline change. Now you're all probably wondering, okay, what's up with Bruce? Well it turns out this Bruce Wayne we got is actually George Clooney Bruce Wayne. Yes. We <laughs> I'm not kidding. We we get George Clooney back. We got George there's George Clooney. George Clooney as Bruce Wayne, and for those of you who don't know, this is George Clooney, Bruce Wayne from um, Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. Get it? You know what I'm saying? Batman and Robin, Bra Batman and Robin, the one with Mr. Freeze. My little brother was sitting next to me, and he was wondering, "Hey, where's Arnold?" And I'm just like, <laughs> I just couldn't stop laughing, knowing the fact that we got George Clooney back as Bruce Wayne. As Bruce Wayne in, in 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 this in this movie at the end of the movie, yeah. So yeah, oh yeah. Forget about resetting the DC extending. So yeah, it's now making me it's, okay. It's making me forget about the whole re DC extending universe reset. By the way, and also the fact that Andy Machete also got a cameo that uh, Barry Allen went through because uh, Barry Allen actually uh, stole uh, Andy Machete's uh, hot dog from his mouth prior to prior to going to court to see his father. By the way. So that was pretty funny. Oh, then I also and I also forgot to mention Barry Allen also lost a tooth during during the uh during during the uh during the lightning during the lightning bolt stroke because in the in the middle of the film in the in the first act of the film Barry Allen lost a tooth and he tries to implant it back in his mouth and I'm just like that's not how it worked. He implants it back his back in his mouth by using super glue and I'm just like that's not how it works. That's not how it works. Well, he, the thing is, his tooth comes off at the end of the movie, and I'm just like, "Dude, man, this is dude, man." And and Barry Allen seeing Bruce Wayne, George Clooney, Bruce Wayne, he's like, he was like, "Who are you? You're not Bruce Wayne." And then 
<laughs> and then that's where the movie ends. That that's it. That's the movie. That's basically the Flash. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was a lot to get through, folks. That was a lot to get through, folks. And I'm telling you right now, in my personal opinion, it's a messy but but a decent film. But at the end of the day, it's not gonna help. It's it's it, it is what it is, I guess. It is what it is. So anyway, that's my take on the Flash movie. So basically, the film overall is a base is basically a mess. And the and and I and the whole Ezra Miller controversy did not help this movie at all. Now, in fairness, if if the whole if all if the whole Ezra Miller controversy did not happen, I think this film would have done much better, in my personal opinion, because um, Ezra Miller, in my opinion, in this movie, despite a few moments of despite despite a few moments in this film, where I think Ezra Miller was okay, the rest of him in that movie, he he wasn't he wasn't great in that movie, in my personal opinion, despite a few emotional moments from him. And then, of course, like I said, there are moments in this film where you are reminded of Ezra Miller's personal life, of his controversies. And on top of that, and then on top of that, and then on top of the messy film that we got, I feel like it does a bit of a disservice to the Flashpoint storyline as well. Because because we don't see um, Aquaman, I mean, honestly, actually, we do see Aquaman at, in a post credit scene. We actually see Aquaman, Jason Momoa, in a post credit scene, which I think is actually uh, it's questionable at questionable at best. But um, but we never get to see Aquaman and Wonder Woman going toe to toe with each other in this in this movie. And basically, it's just a movie full of cameos. By the way, I mean, as cool as the cameos were, it did not help save this film. Neither was the story nor the writing for this film. Some of the acting in this film is actually pretty good, particularly from Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton. And like I said, seeing Michael Keaton in this movie was actually good. In my opinion, Michael Keaton coming back as Batman is the highlight of this movie, in my personal opinion. Because it's basically it's basically reminding you of, obviously, Tim Burton's Batman, but also give you that nostalgic vibe. Well, and while I wish we could have seen Thomas Wayne Batman, but you know it's actually very nice to see Michael Keaton Batman as well. And then the visual effects in this movie, some of the visual effects are, like I said, Warner Brothers could have done a much better job with the visual effects, but they literally spent that entire money on the reshoots and Ezra Miller, not on the visual effects. A two hundred million dollar, two hundred million dollar budget, like come on, Warner Brothers could have done better than that, and they wasted that opportunity with those visual effects some of it i mean you could definitely make the argument that there are some cool visual effects but the rest of it no like they're they were not that great even andy, andy even andy machete coming out to say those visual effects were inten were intentional it's just basically an insult to to this it's basically an insult to not to not only the people who are seeing this film but also but also the people but also you know but, but also the film itself like oh my good and oh my goodness in my first and of course uh, sasha kale was actually pretty good at supergirl and I, I wish we could see her see more of her in the future if if that's where we're gonna if that's if that's the direction that the dc extended universe if the, if if only if that's where i wish we could see more of carl Zorel in the near future if if that's a possibility i mean who knows only time will tell i mean the film itself like the film was already doomed from the start, J just from the production and on all the way to, you know, the overall ex execution. Like, the overall execution of this movie was not great. It was certainly not great at all. Despite, you know, Michael Keaton's, Keaton's return, a few emotion, Keaton's return, a few emotional moments, seeing Supergirl, and, and, and that's just basically it, in my opinion. That's just basically it. General Zod, Michael Shannon, he does, he does a pretty good job coming back as General Zod, but you completely forgot that he's in this movie. I wish we could see some of the more villains. I wish we could have seen some of the villains from The Flash, you know, like Reverse Flash. It would have been cool, but Warner Brothers just wasted a perfect opportunity to do that. You know, just to connect to the DC extent, just to like, you know, you know, you know, just to 
restart the, the universe on top of catching up with Marvel, copying Marvel, being like the multiverse No Way Home of Spider-Man. Spider-Man No Way Home did it better, by the way. Spider-Man No Way Home did a better job handling the multiverse, in my opinion. And Spider-Man No Way Home is also the closest that we're going to get to a, to a live-action Spider-Verse movie, by the way. As for the, as for the Flash movie, not so much for it. And I will tell you this, and I think Ezra Miller's done. Like, he's not coming back from his controversies, nor I don't think he's coming back for the Flash movie. For, I don't think he's coming back for any more Flash roles. And it's hard to tell right now, but in my opinion, I think he's done. He's literally done, in my opinion. Like, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of slot crap that he's got to deal with now. He's got to face reality right now. I don't know how James Gunn's going to handle the DC Extended Universe now. Like, a while back, I thought Warner Brothers with David Zaslav was going to help with, help, was going to make the DC Extended Universe better, but I think where what Warner Brothers is doing right now, I think they're in a bad spot right now. They're in a very bad spot right now. Like how is how they're gonna pick up the pieces with the with the aftermath of the Flash and moving forward with the DC extending universe, and of course lo losing Heavy Cavill in the process. Like it's not a good sign. I mean, what Warner Brothers did, they fired Heavy Cavill as well. Like they fired Heavy Cavill and. It's, it's literally not good because a lot of people thought that Perry Cavill was the perfect choice for Superman. And I thought that too, in my opinion. And right now, Warner Brothers is in a bad spot. They are in their own hell hole right now. And it's hard to tell right now where, where Warner Brothers is going to go right now. Especially James Gunn. Because I had high hopes for James Gunn, especially after the... Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, including the Suicide Squad film that came out in 2021. Like, I have high hopes for James Gunn. I hope he's able to pick up the pieces, but right now it is very hard to tell right now. Especially where Warner Bros. is going right now. In the especially where Warner Bros. is going in the direction that they're in, in the direction they are right now. Plus, they got Blue Beetle and Aquaman 2 coming out. I don't know how well those films are gonna are how well those films are going to do especially Aquaman 2 since they get they still have Amber Heard I don't know how well that film's going to do with her with Amber Heard despite knowing the fact that yeah she lost her court case and being a total liar so I don't know how that's going to work but overall the Flash movie it's not doing so well at the box office Despite everything that is going on with this film, the film is a complete mess. A wasted opportunity for not only an origin story for the Flash, but also for the Flashpoint as well. So, anyway, that is that is my take. That is my review on the Flash movie. So, what do you all think of the Flash? Did you thought you liked this movie? Did you thought the film was decent? Did you not like this movie? I would like to hear your thoughts. I mean... I would like to hear your thoughts. I mean, let me know what you think. So anyway, that is a wrap for for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like I said, I would love to hear your thoughts on this movie. So anyway, that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you all for tuning in to Kodo Cinema. I'm your host, Mark Kodo, aka Kodo Man. Remember to watch movies and stay positive.